would you lift your hands to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Rose of Sharon, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Give him all the praise. Bless him for tonight because your life will never be the same. The Bible declares they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Someone is saying thank you Jesus. For your mighty hand in our midst. Thank you Jesus. For signs and wonders. Thank you Jesus. For healings and deliverances. Thank you Jesus. For confirming your word. Thank you Jesus. Ask him to give you an encounter tonight by the Spirit. We obtain grace. We obtain grace. We obtain grace. We obtain grace in the name of Jesus. We obtain grace by the power of the Holy Spirit. Someone is praying. Give me an encounter that will turn my life around. In the name of Jesus, give me a testimony that becomes a stamp of your presence, a stamp of your favor, a stamp of your goodness upon my life. For in Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. Father, we thank you for tonight. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Thank you because this is a place of understanding. This is a place of power. This is a place of revelation. This is a place where you confirm your words with signs following. This is a place where you turn the destinies of men around. Where Saul becomes Paul. Where Cephas becomes Peter. Where Abraham becomes Abraham. We submit to your wisdom tonight and we pray that you will do us good and to jesus be all the praise for in jesus matchless name we have prayed all right god bless you please give jesus a big hand clap and then be seated welcome to church in the name of jesus christ hallelujah um just a few quick functions and then we get straight to the ministry of the word um, first, to announce to us that by the grace of God, next week, the 17th, will be our final service for 2023. Are you kidding me? This is how you celebrate the faithfulness of God? Come on. Hallelujah. It's going to be a time of praise. It's going to be a time to celebrate. It's going to be a time of thanksgiving. And then we'll speak over our lives. Um, 15th will be Zaria. And then 17th will wrap up in Abuja here. Um, that leads me to the next announcement. From Wednesday down to Friday, we'll be in Zaria. It's going to be three days of phenomenal uh, um, encounters in the spirit. Are you giving Jesus a big hand clap? Wednesday will be the workers' appreciation dinner. Thursday morning will be the welfare and the medical outreach and then thursday evening will be the concert it's called a night of worship you'll be an incredible time of worship just pouring our hearts before the lord and then friday will be the final service in zaria then we return to wrap up here i think someone should thank god already for his faithfulness Hallelujah. Second announcement, which is very important, is we have a custom in this ministry after the last service or at the last service, as a global family, we come with an end of year sacrifice. This we have practiced for many years. This is number one, to acknowledge the faithfulness of God. Number two, as a thanksgiving offering. Number three, connecting by faith to what God is going to be doing 
the year that will be coming. So please, I'd like you to prepare with understanding, prepare intelligently as you come next week. And this is also to our global family. Come with your end of year sacrifice and we're going to be speaking over it and then we'll be sowing it to the glory of the name of the Lord. You can inform all your friends and loved ones where ministry that believes in giving with understanding and make sure you do not miss out of this end of year sacrifice. Hallelujah. Now, I'm truly, truly very honored tonight. Um, we have in our midst not just our royal fathers from my hometown, but the entire traditional council. They came all the way from Lantang North and South, led by His Royal Highness, the Ponjizini himself, the acting president of the Joint Traditional Council. Come on, these are my people. Would you give them a big, big, big honor? This is a house of honor. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the interesting thing is this. The entire royal fathers, they literally represent the entire traditional council where I come from. And um, I was very honored, truly very honored. I don't know if they have done this to anybody I know, any son of the soil, that the entire traditional council would come right from my village and hear every single one of them, all the chiefdoms here represented. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to me. You see, it is one thing for an individual to love the Lord, but when your territory, represented by the royal fathers, decide to come and honor Jesus themselves, that is already a miracle for that territory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And... Um, we had a very wonderful session with them discussing about the land and, you know, just appraising what God has been doing so far and coming up with very positive recommendations um, as to be able to move this territory. You cannot write the story of Christianity in Nigeria and the Middle Belt without talking about the love and labor my people are typically warriors. I come from a lineage of warriors. But then, in as much as that is true, they embrace the gospel and it is by it that it was able to spread around. Hallelujah. And so, I believe that what is happening in this place tonight is prophetic, not only for my people, but is going to become a model. We have sung endlessly here that there are kings and there are kingdoms. There are mountains and there are thrones, but that in our life and by the light that is helping us to shine, that only Yeshua. Hallelujah. So what you are witnessing tonight is not just my fathers, my royal fathers coming together, but it is a prophetic sign to Nigeria, to Africa, that it is time that the kingdoms of this world, that they become in experience the kingdoms of our God, and of his Christ. Hallelujah. At our earlier, at the meeting we had earlier on, I was discussing with them and we mentioned the fact that I've traveled a bit around the world and even within this nation. And I remember a place that I, I, I visited and they showed me the pulpit of the missionaries, people like Samuel Ajayi Crowder, Joseph Johnson, these were people who loved the Lord. And I remember in that story, the person who was giving us the narration told us that that land changed when the king officially embraced Jesus. There is something about citizens independently embracing Jesus. But when kings that represent the gatekeepers of territory say, as for me and my kingdom, we will serve the Lord. That's what happened in Daniel chapter 3. 
Nebuchadnezzar made a decree that no one would defy the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hallelujah. And so, please, I want you to allow me. I am going to invite His Royal Highness, Nimnan Langnim, the Ponjizini, acting on behalf of the entire traditional council to just come and bring us a word of greetings. Please, honor a royal father. Konainia, can we make some good noise for the Lord? I wouldn't want to take so much of your time, but I give God the glory, the honor. I want to appreciate my spiritual father. I also want to appreciate the entirety of Lantan Joint Traditional Council. We are here to honor our own. We are here to bless Jesus. And we are here representing all the kingdoms in Tarok land to surrender the entirety of our land to Jesus. Thank you, and may God bless all of us. Thank you. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, let me tell you something very humbling. One of the major reasons why they came was that they made up their minds as the kings and as the entire territory that they traveled all the way to come and hand over the entire Tarot nation to Jesus. I do not know. Listen. I have seen awakenings. I have seen moves. But this is the first time in my life I know that kings together representing an entire nation and are coming to say we are kings. There's none of them who is missing. All of them are complete the entire chief dogs. I'm not aware of any. Hallelujah. It is one thing to be a blessing to people around the world, but when God visits your own land, it is a great blessing. Hallelujah. It's been our prayer, it's been our cry that God will restore something that my people lost years ago. Amen. Hallelujah. Historically, not to bore you, but just, just give me this honor for a few minutes. There are people who have the mantle of warriors. They live on mountains. There are people who are warriors in the spirit. I'm sure that you can see it in the regalia of his royal highness himself is an emblem of not just royalty but strength you see that and you see it reflected even in the nigerian army and several other things is a grace that god gave the people and they embrace the gospel but along the line some of our forefathers for whatever reason we still honor them but they went into the worship of the dead the worship of masquerades, the worship of all kinds of things, being beguiled by strange spirits. But then we thank God because God will always leave himself a witness. Hallelujah. 
And this is just an example to show you that your prayers are being heard by God. That every time we pray over the nations, over the, the kingdoms, and we sing his praises, this is not just mere religion. This is truly apostolic Christianity. When territories come to the knowledge of Jesus, hallelujah, I was almost in tears as we had the discussion. And I want to, to tell you that there is none of these, my royal father standing here, there is none of them who will not say amen, bowing their heads in prayer when you mention the name of Jesus. I have not seen that happen. I know you can have a council where one or two people love the Lord and then others are just doing their thing. But that they have made up their minds that as for the Tarok nation, and I'm saying this to the globe, but also to my people, in the name of Jesus, in our lifetime, we will see the Lord restore the glory of Zion. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, they made a very humbling request, and I want to honor that request before we continue. I am going to respectfully ask the entire Royal Council to please come up on stage and just be here. And they have requested that the entire Koinonia Global family should pray for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. So please, let's give them a big honor, every one of them. Give them a big honor. Adonai, Lamb of God, you are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign in my life. Adonai. Hallelujah. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to be standing close to these great men who represent literally without exaggeration the entire traditional council of the Tarot Nation. And they have requested that we pray as a global family. They are our fathers in the flesh. But by the privilege of God's grace, they have discerned that which God has placed upon us. And I'll ask them to stand. Please do not kneel, sirs. Your standing is fine. It's enough. Hallelujah. But from the depth of your heart, by the privilege of priesthood, may I request Koinonia Global. I know there are people following from the United States, Europe, Africa, pastors connecting from across. Please pray for my land. Pray for the nation. Pray for my fathers. In one minute. Lord, we establish righteousness. We decree and declare, let revival come upon the Tarot nation. Let our sons and daughters call upon the name of he that died and rose again. Someone is praying. Use the royal fathers as a point of contact. Let there be economic revival, educational revival, health care revival. In the name of Jesus, we hand over this nation to Jesus, the entire Tarok nation. In the name of Jesus, you belong to Jesus, the Son of the living God. Go ahead and pray in one minute. Father, like you did in Fiji Island, like you did in Europe, like you did in America, like you did in the history of Nigeria. Visit our land again. Visit our people again. Visit our children again. Visit our sons and daughters again. Visit our fathers again. And it shall come to pass 
that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons your daughters old and young in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus one more prayer political power will come and go but royalties remain until death hallelujah the government we had 20 years ago is not the government we had 10 years ago in fact the government we started this year with is not the government that is currently in power at best you have eight years as a president or a governor and then you come and go but the royal fathers remain that means for any impacts to last beyond the political power the fathers must receive that agenda are we together we are going to use our fathers in one minute not to keep them waiting as a point of contact you will now pray for your land lord if you have done it in the tarot nation reproduce it in my land go ahead and pray we are using the tarot nation and this revival that is beginning go ahead the north the east south and west south south southwest pray for every clan every tribe using the model of this that has happened tonight we decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ so I will pray now, we'll pray in that capacity by the spirit of grace. Father, it is an honor to lift up the beautiful Tarok nation that you have so honored and lifted. It is out of that nation that we have come and you have granted us the grace to make our contribution as far as blessing the earth is concerned. That every sound that men hear from us has come from this ancestry and lord we honor our fathers and we honor this nation for the foundation and for all that you established and lord our fathers in their entirety have come demanding that the entire tarot nation be handed over to jesus and so father i stand by this apostolic and prophetic mantle in the name of Jesus standing as your servant I decree and declare in the presence of our fathers we speak to gates we speak to territories over the Tarot nation hear the word of the Lord the kings and the priests have agreed that Jesus and his power and his reign alone will be seen there as far as dominion is concerned it is the business of the king and the priest and prophetically we stand here that the king and the priest are in agreement we say maranatha yeah. let revival come yeah. let our sons and daughters arise yeah. let many joshua selmans arise yeah. let greater than joshua selmans arise in education in politics in military in ministry in the name of jesus by this declaration we declare that the spirit of untimely death comes to end over our land the spirit of poverty comes to end over our land every covenant that has come with the worship of the dead the worship of all kinds of negative ancestral powers i stand by the privilege of priesthood we rattle that spirit to its foundation we declare liberty to our sons and daughters in the name of jesus father we declare over the tarot nation jesus and him alone is lord across the entire chiefdoms across the length and the breadth of this region and this nation let jesus alone be exalted 
Lord, we pray that everything that has held us down as a people, finally the exodus comes. Our exodus into Canaan in the name of Jesus. Therefore, in the presence of the fathers of the land and in the name of he who died and rose again, I stand by this apostolic and this prophetic mandate and we declare this land dedicated unto Jesus in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Let's honor them as they return back to their seats. Come on, Koinonia. Give them a big, big God bless you. Please usher them. Are you still clapping? Emmanuel, God is weak. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Some of these fathers you see are very old people. May I, what, what's the oldest, the, the oldest age there? Please remind me. 92. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you again, Your Royal Highness. May God bless you. Please, let's be seated. Now, welcome to Koinonia. Hallelujah. But let me add a word or two. Um, we had very extensive times discussing with our Royal Fathers. And um, honestly, it was a burden to me because among the many things that we discussed, we zoomed down on two very important things that I believe is in desperate need. And I'm talking to everyone, but I'm also talking to my people. Number one, the fathers agreed that there needs to be a miracle in the healthcare system of the people within there. And I think it's not just peculiar to them. I think most religions have a serious problem as far as healthcare is concerned. I was so burdened and then number two, the issue of education. I've been burdened. There's no tertiary institution, not one, in my entire region. And yet, professors have come out of there, very intelligent, noble people. It became a very serious burden for me. And of course, we have done our bid and we continue to do our bid in terms of education, um, it's an honor that God has given to be able to, to make contributions to help the sons and daughters of the soil to be able to have their educational experience. This we have done faithfully and also committed ourselves to build boreholes across you know, the territories. We have started the goal, the next phase now, is to take it from its current number to have 50 boreholes stationed across the entire length and breadth of the regions now because it is a mountainous region there are other areas where no matter how deep you sink you will not find water and um you know it's it's very important but i was really burdened when he spoke about education because a territory cannot be developed until institutions are planted there when there is a university or there is a polytechnic, with it will come commercial activities from housing to transportation, feeding, stationaries, and all of that. This is how development happens within a territory. And then healthcare, when healthcare, when something is wrong with healthcare, every other thing goes down. Hallelujah. And so we'll continue to make our contributions. I know and I believe, and I'm speaking to the globe, perhaps the international community, and you're hearing me 
and there are agencies that are passionate about making active kingdom investments and contribution, let me recommend a place for you. You may want to consider coming to do a university or coming to do a polytechnic in my region, and I think it will be a great blessing to the people. But healthcare, I'm hoping that God will grant us grace. It's, it's not a promise, but it's really a burden as a result of the discussion. I'm hoping that God will grant us grace, if possible, to be able to build a hospital, you know, and yes, so that um, it can help to improve. But for now, we, we will have to do something. It's my commitment, and I discussed with them already, that we'll try, even if it's to put a week long and bring in doctors, you know, and then have them treat some of the people, just send whatever it is. It is better than nothing. We cannot wait until the day that a hospital is there for the boreholes will keep building and for the children will continue. We're only stepping up the scholarships that we have been given so that it can now help the people to tertiary institutions and then help them completely until they are done with their program. And um, we have done this and will continue to be faithful. So um, I'm really speaking to people, not just here, but across the globe that you are burdened and you want to make active contributions in the area of education the area of health care why not you can prayerfully consider and um, you can be guided on what to do but I'm praying for everyone here that a day will come your people will recognize your contribution and they will come to acknowledge God publicly in your life this is what impact is all about it's not just about having a name for the sake of a name. It's not about building an empire, but that we're able to live our lives effectively, making a mark. We're not called to do everything. But you see, global transformation starts one person at a time. For every one life you impact, you have reduced the number of people who are left. One person, one person, one person this may be a message for someone everyone wants someone to do something for them but the world is looking for people who will be selfless enough to be able to make their contribution that at the end of our lives it will not just be the cars houses estates travels but it will be that you were able to make a significant contribution this is the purpose of prosperity. This is the purpose of influence. This is the purpose of access. This is the purpose of lifting. Dr. Miles of Blessed Memory will say, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. Hallelujah. So thank you again for helping to honor uh, the traditional council. And once again, we truly honor them and we pray that the Lord himself will bless them for this bold decision that they have made and reward them in Jesus name. Are you ready for tonight? Tonight the teaching would challenge us. It's a contemplation and um, many of us are going to find greater meaning to our lives as a result of this teaching. Many of us will find direction for our lives and destinies according to this teaching. Many of us will find reasons why perhaps we may have been stagnated in life and destiny as a result of this teaching. I trust that what you are about to hear will truly challenge you, for others remind you, for someone shake you and give you a reason to be able to face life with determination and to live your life in such a way that at the end of your life, it will be said that you lived well and you lived a meaningful life. Hallelujah. I'm teaching on the topic that I titled, Choose Life. Choose Life. Choose Life. Choose Life. Joshua 24, 13 to 15. Choose Life. And I have given you a land for which you did not labor, and cities which ye built not, and ye dwelt in them. 
of the vineyards and olive yards which ye have planted, not do ye eat. 14. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, he said, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. He says, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Someone make that statement. We will serve the Lord. One more time. We will serve the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, he says, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. God wants to challenge us tonight by this teaching. It's a call to put our lives in order. It is a call, I think it's Psalm 119 verse 133 or thereabout. Please find it for us. It says, order my steps. Yeah, beautiful. It says, order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Order my steps. That means I'm tired of living a foolish life. I'm tired of rigmaroling around destiny. I want my life to have order, meaning, and precision. Hallelujah. One of the great blessings that I received from two very profound men, Dr. Mike Mudok, still alive, and Dr. Miles Munro of blessed memory, among the many things that they did to me as a contribution to my growth was the awareness of the power of choices and decisions. It is one thing that I learned about them, that decisions truly decide destiny and i'm going to say a few things that i want you to please pay rapt attention to number one is that decisions decide destiny time does not decide destiny location does not necessarily decide destiny age does not necessarily decide destiny gender does not necessarily decide destiny ultimately decisions decide an individual's destiny it's important that you know this i've said it here in this house that your decisions more than your conditions will decide the quality of your life or otherwise your decisions more than your conditions will decide the quality of your life that means it doesn't matter what is currently happening in your life right now your decisions more than your conditions is what will determine the quality of your life eventually the bible and history is full of people who had beautiful conditions but poor decisions turn those conditions to reflect the consequences of their decisions an example is the prodigal son the prodigal son had plenty he had a responsible father he had loving brothers and a family, but his singular decision to part ways with his family landed him in a destiny that we use today to warn people. Are we together? Lot was one who connected to Abraham, had the opportunity to live a life of meaning and purpose, and he decided to separate from Abraham, and he found himself in Sodom. Decisions, more than your conditions, decide the quality of your life. Is someone learning? I have also taught you here that every decision is connected to consequences. A consequence is a corresponding outcome. A consequence, again I repeat, is a corresponding outcome. It's a resultant effect of a cause. So every time... We make choices and decisions. Please listen carefully. We do not choose consequences. 
there are consequences already connected by default to every decision. Poverty is a consequence. Failure is a consequence. Even death in many regards can be a consequence. There are certain sicknesses that are consequences beyond just medical conditions. A life of pain and depression and defeat is a consequence. Our world is full of people angry at consequences, not knowing that we are not given the power to choose consequences. Please listen. We are not given the power to choose consequences. Consequences are already connected by default to decisions. We make choices and decisions and the decisions automatically gravitate us to the corresponding consequences. So you can find two people, one living an excellent life in the spirit, an excellent life as a man of God, an excellent life in destiny, and then on the other hand, you will find an individual living a defeated life. What's the difference? It is not the will of God. What is the difference? It's not the presence of Satan. What is the difference? It's not even the territory where they are domiciled in. Ultimately, their decisions, there were consequences connected to those decisions. To one, he made a superior decision and benefited from a positive consequence. To another, he made a poor decision and the decision delivered without fail the consequences. Every one of us right now is living in the reality of consequences. Are we together? Everyone living in the reality of consequences. What you just watched a few minutes ago is a decision that was made. Now, you, there are consequences that follow this decision that was just made. Consequences of health, life, advancement. Decisions are so powerful that God himself reminds people that I said before you life and death, 30 and verse 19 of Deuteronomy, I said before you blessing and cursing, I said before you life and death, something so powerful that it can choose life or it can choose death for you. Something so powerful that it can bring you to a realm of blessing or a realm of cursing. He says, therefore, this is my counsel, choose life. Hallelujah. Now write the following, please. To choose means that you have to be aware of all the other options available. To choose, this is the implication of making choices. That to choose means that you have to be aware of other options. Maybe not all other options, but other options that are available alongside the outcomes they create. Please listen. You are not able to choose until you understand. If I have just one option or just one outcome, I cannot say choose. The very idea of choosing means that there are many paths to life and destiny. Are we together? The very idea of choosing means that you are at liberty. There are many, many possibilities. You can sample different paths that you want to take in your life and destiny. To choose means you have to be aware. Most believers cannot make quality choices because they are not even aware of what the other options are. They gravitated by default into failure. They gravitated by default either from ancestry, are we together, or through environmental conditioning. The average individual has not been given an opportunity to see life from the lens of wisdom. To be able to see the options and the variables to destiny actualization. Are we together? So like people say, like father, like son. Like mother, like daughter. I saw my father doing this, I am also doing it. I saw my mother doing this, I am also doing it. I saw people bribing and cheating, I'm also doing it. So the average believer is not aware that you truly cannot choose until the first miracle to be able to make quality choices and decisions is that you must be aware of the various options available. If you bring a buffet before me, 
Now I can choose because they might be swallow, maybe rice in their various forms, maybe vegetables, maybe drinks and all of that. Then you can now tell me choose. But if you bring a plate of rice, what you should say is eat, not choose. Because that's the only thing that is there. Are we together? Most people are not aware, and I want you to listen carefully. The devil has blinded the mind of even believers. Most believers do not know that there is another way of living beyond the way they have known. Most believers do not know that your life can be lived in such a way and manner that is different from what you have known. The general psychology is that whatever you find, you follow suit. But I am announcing to you by the authority of scripture that the path you saw may not be the path needed for your destiny. The path you saw may not be the only path. The path of witchcraft, the path of failure, the path of irresponsibility. Are we together? The path of laziness and carelessness and idolatry. It may be the path you saw, but it's not the only path available. It's not my fault, Apostle. This is how life is. No. It is what you know. That may not be the only thing there. Imagine that you want to use a restroom and there are times that in a house or in a building, a structure such like this, there might be multiple restrooms, but they may direct you to one. And if that one is filled or in use, you just stand there stranded, not knowing that there can be other restrooms. It's just that you don't know how to get there. This is how it is with life. Do you know there are many people who do not know that there is a way out of a life of poverty? There are those who do not know that there is a way out of spiritual laxity and laziness. There is a way out of curses and yokes and spells. There is a way out of a life of defeat and mediocrity. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. If God says choose life, then it means the spirit of wisdom has an assignment to open you up to the various options that are there leaving you with the decision to choose there were two trees in the garden of eden that is the first representation of god's determination to make man choose i said before you the tree of life then i said before you the tree of the knowledge of good and evil i can't force you god for you i can't force you i leave you to these options but i can only advise you choose life hallelujah with all due respect the prisons today are full of many people not all people but many people who made choices and the corresponding consequences is what they are experiencing today there are graves today that are testaments of negative consequences as a result of poor choices that people made with their lives to choose me you have to be aware of all the options that are available please look up let me list for you at least four options that are available number one a life of grace and glory a life of dignity and honor is an option that is available on this table grace and glory dignity and honor it's an option you can choose from. Number two, a life of mediocrity, barely surviving, getting by. This is a second option. You are not exactly a failure, but you are not exactly a success too. Mediocrity, average. Number three, a life of total confusion with no sense of direction. That is a third option that can be there. Grace and glory, dignity and honor, mediocrity and an average life, barely getting by. Third option is a life of total confusion, living from pillar to post, hoping you are right. And finally, a life of total defeat, total defeat, failure by every definition. Every one of these outcomes that I just mentioned have decisions connected to them. There is something you need to do that makes you have a life of dignity and honor, a life of grace and glory. There is something you need to do that makes you a mediocre. You don't just become a mediocre. You don't just become an average. No, 
there is something you need to do. There is something you need to do that leaves you confused or not do. That leaves you totally disoriented as far as life and destiny is concerned. As a preacher, as a parent, as a leader. And there is something you need to do or not do. That leaves you a total failure. And one who is an epitome of defeat. I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. And I advise you choose life. The second thing I want you to know is that to choose life means to conclude on a path to follow after a careful examination of the various outcomes they produce. I'll take it again, then you listen. To choose life or to choose means to conclude on a path to follow. To choose means to conclude on a path to follow after careful examination of the various outcomes they produce. So when we say you are choosing, it means that you are not only aware of the various options, but you consider all the options one by one until you are aware of the various consequences they produce. Then you now make a decision from a standpoint of knowledge. Haven't known all the consequences that they produce. This is my conclusion. To choose means to conclude on a path to follow after careful examination of the various outcomes they produce. So you can take poverty as a case study. Study it carefully. Does this bless God? Does this bless you? Does this make you a blessing to people? Use scriptures to check it. Prosperity, godliness, irresponsibility. Are we together? A life of dignity, laziness. All of these options, you consider them. Then at the end of it, you now come to a conclusion that based on my research, I have chosen to follow a life of spirituality, responsibility, dignity. Are we together? Integrity and so on. So choices happen only as a conclusion on a path to follow after careful examination of the various outcomes that they produce. Now, choices and decisions are pathways. Please write it down. Choices and decisions are pathways. They always lead somewhere. Choices and decisions are pathways. P-A-T-H-W-A-Y-S. Pathways. They always lead somewhere. Choices and decisions are pathways. They always lead somewhere. My God. Write this as you believe it. Every time you are making a decision. Koinonia, listen to me. Every time you are making choices. Imagine yourself going somewhere. With choices come motion. We move in destiny by making choices. Not just by moving with your feet. That means in indecision, even if you are moving, you are still. It is the path, the path that you follow is from the choices that you make. Choices are pathways. They always lead somewhere. That means the moment you start making choices, you must live where you are. Either to become better or to become worse. Choices are pathways. They always lead somewhere. Are we together? Write the next point, please. I hope God is speaking to someone already. Prolonged indecision. This one came by the Spirit as I was preparing for this. Prolonged indecision is giving circumstances permission to choose for you. Prolonged indecision is giving circumstances permission to choose for you. That means when you stay in a state of indecision for a long time, what you only succeeded in doing was giving circumstances permission to choose anything for you. A farmer does not need to tell weeds to grow. All he needs to do is to refuse to farm and something will grow. What is the name? Agriculture, we are taught in agriculture that weeds are unwanted plants. 
There are plans, but they are just not wanted. Prolonged indecision is giving circumstances permission to choose for you. Wow. That means if you refuse to make choices and to decide, you will still find yourself going somewhere. That somewhere you go to, life and circumstances became impatient with your indecision and they chose for you. Hmm. I don't know if I will serve God. I don't know if I will be serious. Let's just see how it goes. Eventually, demons will manipulate life and they, you will follow the category of those who have hated God. And you find yourself suffering the consequence. And you say, I cannot remember making this choice. Prolonged indecision is giving life permission to choose for you. It is dangerous to allow circumstances choose your outcomes. It will always be to your disadvantage. Is God speaking to someone? Prolonged indecision is giving circumstances permission to choose for you. Next point, very quickly. God is challenging our thoughts. It takes making decisions to rise in life and it takes making decisions to fall in life. When people rise, it is because of decisions. When people fall or fail in life, it is because of decisions. It takes making decisions to rise in life and it takes making decisions to fall or to fail in life. If we're together, say amen. amen. Now, I want you to look up, please. Do you know the major way causes and enchantments work? I want to teach you something. Let me have your attention, please. Causes and enchantments. All these things we call causes and enchantments. Do you know how they work? They work by programming your ability to make decisions. This is principally how causes enchantments work it is also the way the blessing works all of them depend on the cooperation of your decisions they influence you causes enchantments manipulate you into making wrong choices and decisions so that you find out that your outcome becomes predictably bad the same spirit influence your father and he, for instance, got into drinking, got into whatever things, and it destroyed his life. You find out as a young man, when that curse is working on you, it has no power on you if you don't have a mind. It will manipulate your thinking to start making you make decisions. It plants your appetite around certain decisions that produce a predictable consequence. So it's not just that curses and enchantments work arbitrarily. No, they depend on the cooperation of your will. So one of the ways we really get delivered from curses and yokes I have taught you is not just conducting deliverance. It's giving you a superior orientation so that your choices will now come from another kind of information and idea. Is someone listening now? enchantments i have seen people who will tell you from today i will behave well from today i'll be a nice person and this spirit they manipulate the person now i hope you know it's not the spirits that carried your two legs to the place of trouble you went there by yourself they influenced you the same way when the blessing is on you it will make you to have an appetite to come to church and the day you come to church, that is the day your word will come. The day you come to church like the dear lady who gave the testimony, that is the day that you will meet your employee. And one thing will lead to the other. That is how the blessing works. So when I speak over you and say be blessed, among the many things the Holy Spirit is doing, it's not just a force that rests on you and vetoes your will. It begins to guide i don't want to use the word manipulate you don't use that for the spirit of god but it begins to culture and influence your thinking are we together and you will start making pro-life decisions pro-prosperity decisions pro-responsibility decisions pro-development decisions you can always know what spirit is influencing you by the kind of decisions you are making and the outcomes that follow are we together? 
if you find out that your life is always ending in pain you are getting into trouble all kinds of troubles it is either you are wasting the ministry of the holy spirit through rebellion and stubbornness or it's not even the holy spirit who is there in the first place i hope you know that many spirits can coexist within a man the madman in gadara a good lesson peter even though he was with jesus jesus rebuked satan from him and says peter satan has desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you and peter did not even know when satan entered him the bible says satan entered judas so judas's desire to use jesus to make money was not ordinary his will was there but the assignment of satan was to manipulate him how many of you have seen a puppet this thing they do for children you put your hands inside and then you are making the thing sing now it can be so real you forget that it's actually a human being's hand are we together but if you drop that thing without the hand it has no power the singing and the dancing happens because someone's hand is controlling it i'm praying for somebody in the name of jesus christ every decision that has landed you in trouble landed your family in pain poverty a life of mediocrity a life that is far from god i'm praying for you by the spirit of the living god let a miracle of deliverance happen for you tonight <laughs> hallelujah it takes making decisions to rise in life and it takes making decisions to fall or to fail in life failure has a formula are we together unfortunately for failure you don't have to learn it to experience it the formula was designed to find you and act upon you in the presence of ignorance write this down the real value of wisdom the real value of wisdom is in its ability to help you make destiny superior destiny advancing decisions i'll take it again the real value of wisdom is in its ability to help you make superior destiny advancing decisions so if you say i am wise or i have the spirit of wisdom in my life the real value of wisdom is in its ability to help you make superior destiny advancing decisions please write it write it in your heart and write it on your notes the real value of wisdom is in its ability to help you make superior destiny advancing decisions There are many people claiming to be wise. There are many impartation services with all due respect that purport to impart wisdom. But we do not see the excellency of wisdom in the life of believers because believers are still surrounded by very foolish decisions that they keep making again and again and again. And the moment you see that the effects of the decisions that you make is not leading you towards a desired heaven, it then means you are bankrupt of wisdom. The Bible says, does any man lack wisdom? My question is, how do you know you do not have wisdom? By the outcomes of your life. You can know that I'm bankrupt of the wisdom of God by the outcomes. Listen, the real value of wisdom, it's in its ability to influence the quality of decisions that you make. When a man carries the spirit of wisdom, most, if not all, your decisions will be superior, destiny-advancing decisions. You can always know whether it is wisdom speaking or another spirit speaking by the quality of decisions. Are we together now? Yes. Listen, this issue of decisions, I remember many years ago, I would hear Dr. Mudok would say, decisions decide destiny. I, un I got what he was saying, but perhaps I did not understand the gravity of what he was saying. I've had the honor of meeting people I used to know many, many years ago. And for some of them, their lives have not changed. 
or some of them have become very worst versions of themselves i remember not too long ago i met someone i used to know years ago my goodness his life was not something to write home about i had to honestly ask him what happened but then i was asking something that whose answer i already knew decisions decisions your conditions can be great but your decisions will superimpose your conditions and bring you into a negative consequence if they are poor decisions whereas for another you can come you can have negative conditions surrounding you and make quality choices and decisions that end up bringing you to your desired heavens i respected the power of choices and decisions when i came into a position of leadership and i understood how serious choices and decisions were do you know that one decision can make you a bad father forever one decision can make you a bad mother forever this is how powerful it is one decision or indecision can send you to hell not two not three one decision this is how powerful decisions are there are people who have been sick in the hospital and yet they were able to survive there are people who had accidents hit by metals and all of that and were able to endure but one decision you can make it will not injure you physically but it can literally define your eternal destiny whoever told you that choices and decisions are a cheap matter to play with i can tell you sincerely you are where you are right now looking at me especially if you hate where you are it is an uncomfortable truth but i want you to admit it right now in koinonia that you are where you are as a reflection of the decisions and the choices that you have made apostle everybody hates me it has to be demonic i agree but those demons require something to work on and you donated your will through ignorance or your passion to not get knowledge and cooperated with them in bringing yourself to this current state can i tell you your real deliverance begins the day you admit that i am where i am comfortable or not because of the decisions i have made with my life hallelujah there are many people who have made foolish decisions in the name of smartness now when the devil wants to deceive you he changes the name of the consequences to attract you are we together now yes satan will call poison sweet or whatever it is and then because the name changed does not mean the outcome will change are we together now yes if you carry rotten food and you package it and put it in a beautiful cooler does it change the state of the rotten food it is still rotten it's only the container the only thing is that it would deceive more in that state but it is still rotten food this is the game satan has been playing with many people repackaging destruction in many packages that seem pleasant and someone will come to the shop of life and destiny and your eyes will go straight to something that has the power to tear you into pieces but because it is packaged so beautifully you will say this is what i want god will respect you satan will rejoice with you you make the choices and then when you now buy it you are forced to eat of it because this is what happens choose life that you and your children may live. I had the option of being a serious man of God or otherwise. I have the option of leading God's people with integrity and truth or otherwise. Are we together now? When you choose, it is the conclusion of many, many alternatives that you have thrown away. But the excellency of the decisions and the choices that you make, it is demonstrated. In, you see, let me tell you this you cannot fake choices forever no it will catch up with you the consequences know your address more than dhl they will find you you make choices and travel anywhere they will fish you out it's not like this one that does say where's your house and be going around you know the delivery man will be tired because he cannot find where your house is even if you decide to go to a place where you are alone the choices are so powerful with digital precision they will look for you for instance 
There are people rejecting God now because they want money. Hello? Let me have your attention. There are people, the moment you mention anything God or anything church, because they are still 17 years, 25 years, 30 years, they say, I have time. Don't mind this thing of God. And then they open their eyes and find out they are celebrating 50. And all the children they gave back to, not one of them is serving God because like father, like son. Are we together now? And then they begin to get angry. What is this? There are people who made a decision and are making decisions now that they will not be responsible with their lives. They will wake up and find out you have 50, 60 years. You have not built any house. Your grandchildren, your children are still living in one room with all due respect. One way the devil distracts us and robs us of the power to choose is giving excuses and offense. These two things. Excuses and offense are Satan's weapons of mass destruction. The moment you master the art of giving excuses and then you bring yourself to a life of offense, you will never have the capacity to make quality choices. Why is your prayer life still down? Well, you see, there's no light in my compound. I'm staying in a place where there are many noisy people and you know how this prayer thing, you need time. Excuses. Are we together? Yes. What did you do with the five million naira that they gave you? You know the way this country is, eh? I want to explain something. This, rather than taking responsibility to say, listen, I wasted it on riotous living. I am a prodigal son. I need help. Hello? The moment the prodigal son made up his mind to choose well, no demon in hell could keep him there. As powerful as Satan is, Satan could mislead him to leave the house. But the boy, can you imagine? No prayer warrior was interceding for him. By himself, he said, I will arise. Where were the spirits when he was going? The devil is not that powerful. It is the manipulation of your understanding that regardless what you choose, he can veto it. It's a lie. If God respects your choice, every other spirit must also respect your choice. He said, behold, I stand. Watch this. Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. Who is knocking? God. Satan too knocks. It's just that he doesn't tell you he's knocking. He's too proud to admit that he needs to knock too. So he will manipulate you into believing. Give me the keys to your heart. And you give it to him. So he can open the door any day and any time. That revelation that God knocks is powerful. Every other spirit that has not been knocking, force it to go behind the door and say knock. And if you hear no, go away. Hallelujah. I will arise and I will go to my father. I will arise from this life of foolishness. I will arise from this misbehavior. Why is it that all good people keep living my life? I think there's just some disfavor. It's a lie. Every, you have made up your mind that you would talk anyhow. And people don't want you to be talking anyhow and carelessly. So they take you away from every time they are having their friends come around. If you say I'm coming to, they say, please, you are not invited. Is because of your mouth. It's, this is a self-inflicted cause. Because once you come there, you will rubbish that meeting and the business meeting will end up being a wrestling because of something you will say. Choices. You can make up your mind that I will trust God to teach my lips how to speak. I have taught you that everything God gave man, God gave man control over. Say control. Please shout it. Say control. There is nothing God gave man that God did not give man control. Anything God gave you that you lose control of it, a spirit has taken it over. Your appetites, your passion, your thinking, if it is God that gave you, he also gave you the power to control it. Is someone learning? I continue to watch people make bad choices with their lives. Destiny damaging choices, even Christians. And yet they are surprised 
why certain outcomes continue to recycle do you know there are people today in all honesty this year was like last year regardless what prophetic word came because no prophetic word will veto your ability to choose prophetic words are announced so that you will know what god wants to do then align your decisions and your choices are we together deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass it's in your bible if thou shalt hearken why would god be explaining it to men i thought he's all powerful if you want to bless bless god if you want to curse curse god if you want to move it israel out of egypt move them you are almighty why does god seem helpless when he's talking with men because he gave man one ability that makes man like him the power to choose jesus had the power to say god plans have changed i will not die for any man these people are crazy they are coming to die for them and they are not grateful and god would have respected his choice i hope you know that the bible says he was tempted in every way father if it be thy will take this cup of me he said i have the power to call a legion of angels many of us right now the lord gave me this message to the body of christ the decisions that you are making you can pray and make wrong choices your wrong choices will veto your prayer if god wants to help you he will send you mercy another person will come and influence your mind can i tell you your choices will influence you more than your prayer life hear what i'm teaching you your choices will influence the outcome of your life and destiny more than your prayer life it is the reason why there is a lot of prayer with all due respect that happens in the body of christ and yet you do not see people making constructive destiny advancement because many believers just pray as a ritual but they do not purify their decisions to make word compliant pro destiny decisions there are people till the next 10 years they will still be poor because of their decisions there are people till the next 10 years they will never build a house with all due respect there are pastors and leaders for the next 10 years they will never rise and don't say it does not matter there are individuals whose lives will never make any notable kingdom impact because of decisions decisions for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of the lord for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way you've heard me say it here in koinonia if you come from a poor family don't let a poor family come out of you if you come from a family of witchcraft don't let witchcraft come out of you if you were raised with all due respect by irresponsible parents don't waste the time arguing and hating them and then you wake up and see children all around you and they call you daddy you are almost tempted to say you are not my children but time has gone many of you right now you are wasting time in anger you are wasting time in bitterness anger and bitterness does not lead you to your desired heaven the day you settle down and choose apostle i was raped when i was small i sympathize with you i don't downplay your pain but if you stay there complaining you will get to 40 years 50 years and not make any quality decision apostle i i hate my parents because when other people were going to school they were there around dancing around masquerades and the result now is all of us are poor what are you doing about it they have run their own course can i tell you in my world i have taught you koinonia in my world an adult is not 18 years i respect that statistics but it's a deception to many people there are many many adults calling themselves children in my world the moment you can decide and you have an awareness of the consequences you become an adult immediately how soon immediately let's stop pampering people to produce 
destructive destinies. You see someone 35 years, 40 years, and he says, I'm a last one. What does that mean? <laughs> of course, I'm not being sarcastic. Yes, thank God that you're so. Destiny does not care, ladies and gentlemen. The one who decides, if it be thou, bid me come. He said, come. The one who chose to walk out on water was the one who experienced that miracle. Hallelujah. Our world is full of commentators who never make choices and decide. They comment about those making strategic impact and they cannot jump out of that water. Our business people, I'm ashamed of them. Something as easy as this and they will never do it. Preachers who are talking like ah, that scripture is not really correct and yet they will never do anything impactful. The world does not reward commentators. It is those who get up and, and do something with their lives. Are we together? There are many people who insulted fathers, insulted mothers, parents now. Now is their turn. Their children are suffering worse conditions now. If your father and your mother with all due respect lived a mediocre life, the first way out is to find another father and mother who reflects what you want to become. I told you that the principles of followership is twofold. Number one, follow them. Number two, looking on to Jesus. This is how we become in the kingdom. Follow them is the first principle of followership. There are some them that represent where you are going. Do you know why God creates, puts leaders in front of you? Those leaders are an attempt to model your future. That where you want to go to. So leaders are a personification of outcomes. A personification of decisions. So that you can see the outcome in the life of others. Seeing somebody fail and then you go and fail again. You are the one who is twice as unwise. Because they already failed for you. The beauty of leadership is an opportunity to see the scars of people. They will show you their scars that I made this decision. And this is the consequence. Now I am teaching you to save you the 20 years I wasted in my own life, a leader will say. And yet many people will not respect it. I have taught you here in Koinonia that do not only respect crowns, respect scars. Because both crowns and scars are teachers. Any man you see wearing a crown, look very well. Beyond the regalia, look at his hands, you will see a scar. A scar, a testament of wrong decisions, a testament of endurance, sometimes a testament of right decisions. Is someone learning? Ask, bring sample 10 young believers. Someone who would tell you, I'm going to be a great man of God and ask him, what are you doing now? It will tell you, well, uh, once in a while I listen to some messages if I have the time to. And then I just know what I'm focused on writing what God told me. My dear minister in the making, you will never arrive there by that behavior. No. No. There are many like you who wished ministry. Unfortunately, it does not happen by wishing. The Bible says, walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Walk it out. Hallelujah. There are many gentlemen right now. They cannot tell me the last time they read a book. A quality pro-destiny book. Many gentlemen cannot tell the last time they opened themselves to receive quality strategic mentorship. Receiving mentorship at your terms is a joke. You will never amount to anything. It's like a teacher, a student telling the teacher, I'm not ready to learn now. Just be patient. Allow me rest. When I'm ready, I will call you. Jesus says nonsense. <laughs> are we together? How many people are poor and broke today but will never respect the wisdom that comes from people who have been helped by God? No. Hallelujah. You want to become a great mother. And you see a woman who is exceptional with her home and her children and you disrespect them do you know every time i see great people i look past their result 
I want to buy into their mindset because their results are consequences. Did you hear that? Their results are consequences. There are decisions that led there. And I want to hear it. What is your understanding like? What are your decision-making processes like? Man of God, what decisions have you made that brought such power, such grace, such influence to your life? Let me sing that song again. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Now, let me tell you this. I came from an evangelical background and being that my whole training and my exposure in ministry was from the northern middle belt and context you know we got that foundation of character moral excellence but there were certain things about administrative excellence that I did not have the opportunity to see because of the background as God began to expose me to a global audience I knew that there were some things I did not get by the advantage of my background and that I will have to reinvent myself and so back to the formula of followership follow them looking on to Jesus there are things that them cannot teach you because the them to are students it's just that they have gone ahead are we together and I began to learn administrative principles these are things that you do not get just by impartation. No, you get by knowledge. Serious, constructive, definite knowledge. And I started getting the materials, opening up myself to the various trainings in addition to being a man of God to become an effective leader. Leader of resources, leader of people. You see that now? You want God to trust you to manage his resources and all you have is a sincere heart that is good, but that is not enough. No. The dynamics of managing resources, resources there being both human and material resources. This one is a learned skill. It comes by training. It's not just a gift. Hallelujah. There are many believers who are trusting God for increase and promotion. You want to pastor 100 members? There is a skill to pastor 100 members. You want to pastor a thousand members with the mentality of the one who pastors a hundred members? No. God loves his sheep too much. He will not trust you with that kind of thing. There is something you need to know. The dynamics of conflict resolution. The dynamics of people management. There are several things you need to learn at an elevated state. In addition to prayer, fasting, and the ministry of the word. Decisions. What is the difference between someone who is running a big shopping mall and another person who is struggling with a small shop? It's not just exposure, it's their decisions. The person small there is either starting small or he has refused to grow. Refusal to grow is a decision and God and life can respect it. But the consequences that come with stuntedness will also meet you there. Without growth, there is no fruitfulness fruitfulness is a direct product of growth if you see a baby that is pregnant would you run away is that normal come on talk to me adults is that normal no no matter what genetic explanation they give in africa we'll call that person a witch wherever you came from you are older than this body you are entering and you will talk to the spirit and say you can't be that young and maybe in some places they may even completely throw away that that because fruitfulness is a product of growth if you go and plant mango seed and by the next day you see a tiny branch and you see mangoes bigger than it you will not eat that mango because we were trained to respect fruitfulness when we find growth are we together now so most people brag about being fruitful but they do not want to grow if you do not grow you cannot be fruitful be fruitful in ministry be fruitful in business be fruitful in destiny it is a product of growth please say growth and i have taught you that success is not what you seek success is what you attract by who you are becoming your growth is how success is attracted to you are we together the moment you transit into superior versions of you you begin to attract a certain kind of people a certain kind of resources a certain kind of influence these are irrefutable spiritual laws 
Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And Jesus increased. I like that scripture. And Jesus increased. Even though the word of God, even though the fountain of wisdom, he subjected himself to this law. He increased. What does that mean? Another measure of that increase came to him. In wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with man. Once upon a time, I would never be able to say the whole globe should listen to me. Once upon a time, I was still alive, yet you will not come to hear me. Once upon a time, I was even anointed, yet you will not come to hear me. What happened? Growth. Growth. Once upon a time, it would be foolishness and a demonic attack for me to want to go to another nation and organize a conference. Where will the money come from? And if the money comes, where will the people come from? And if the people come, the level of grace to defend that call, say growth. This is very powerful. There are many people praying for realms that they are not willing to grow into and it will never come. Pastors are praying sincerely, Lord, give me a global vision. And they think all there is is anointing and one sermon. Ministry preaching only accounts for about 30% of ministry. There are many other unseen aspects of ministry. You can preach well and fail as if God did not call you. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe upon my life. I receive, I manifest. Your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up and so That is why, even in the spirit, there is something called spiritual growth. Are we together now? There are things I can do now in the spirit I would not have been able to do 10 20 years ago. Not because it's not the same life I have, but exploring the riches of that life and walking in dexterity, the power, the grace, the wisdom. Are we together? And there are many young people because of this arrogance of our generation believing I can do all things in Christ. They have dared certain things that are beyond the scope of their growth and beyond the level of the spiritual power that they carry and they have casualties to tell for it you see with all due respect you see this simple thing here coming to have all the fathers in a land and then you are making declarations and speaking over spirits let me tell you you better know where you stand before you take a risk like this there are people you do this kind of thing before the service is your dead body they will carry out as simple as it sounds because in making declarations, you are talking to spirits who are hearing you. <laughs> it sounds very easy, but there are idols in your own village. You go and try it. <laughs> Just go and gather the people and say, I come. I've read in my Bible, you shall take up serpents. Where is the, the those in charge of the shrine? I'm not scaring you. Forget it. If you don't grow, there are things you will see in the Bible, but on trying it, you've watched wrestling. That's what we call wrestling. Wrestling, that people jump and fly and, you know, fall down on one another and twist one another, throw them up as if they are playing. They give disclaimers and say you are watching for entertainment. Make sure, parents watch your children. Make sure they do not try it. By the time you see your little child tie something on his neck, because he wants to be Superman and then he climbs the dining table and jumps up and falls. Does that mean that realm cannot be attained? It can be attained by men, but not a man as small as that boy. There is something that boy can do and build muscles and stamina. Are we together? One day, the same person who was crying will now jump up and fall down. That's how it is spiritually. There is a level of capacity you must carry, recognized by heaven and hell, to be able to do certain things. 
There are people today who have spoken over people. I rebuke that 125 year course upon your life. And by the next day, they get into dementia. They start forgetting everything. And you are asking, Pastor, what happened? They, they, they threaded a territory that their growth could not afford. If growth was not necessary, God will not appoint men to follow men, nor men to ordain men. Are we together now? Is someone listening now? Yes. We are talking decisions, but it's important for you to listen. Growth. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child. There are people who have refused to grow. I'm going to say this because I want to round up by recapping something I've taught you. But the Lord put it in my spirit to challenge many people. Last year will look like this year. This year will look like next year. Regardless the prophetic word that comes, your 10 years will look like yesterday or even worse than yesterday if you do not understand the power of choices and decisions. There are nations that when I travel to, you will see something you once saw, but when you get there, you almost cannot know the place again because they have decided to improve and develop the place. There are places you wear as a child, even with your eyes closed, you can locate it. As a child, you were the one who hits the wall and that part in the wall you hit is still like that today, now that you are an adult, because nobody could fix whatever happened there. It's not good. Nations can decide to remain stagnated individuals can decide to remain stagnated families can decide to be a center of reproach and shame men can decide that i will not rise i will remain small i pray for you whatever has kept you down my dear people in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god i'm praying that in this service you will begin to make constructive choices Prostitution is a choice. Arm robbery is a choice. Laziness is a choice. Prayerlessness is a choice. Wordlessness is a choice. Refusing to come to church is a choice. Having bad friends is a choice. Having good friends is a choice. Being a failure is a choice. It's just a choice whose dynamics you did not understand, but it's a choice. Being poor is a choice. Being a mediocre is a choice. Living without help is a choice. Not enjoying the ministry of men is a choice. Failing in whatever you do is a choice. Becoming a child of God is a choice. As powerful as the Holy Spirit is, there are people here now who are not born again. In all the overflows who are not born again. The thousands following across the globe who are not born again. He will be around you, but he will respect you. Waiting for the moment you declare the logic of Jesus by yourself. Hallelujah. Now let me tell you the truth. When God taught me this, I made up my mind. And I started making certain quality choices with my life. I want you to listen now. Fasten your seatbelt because we are going to rush very, very fast. I began to make certain choices with my life. And the Lord gave me an assurance that if I insisted on making and staying on those choices, that I will become a certain kind of believer. And we are not yet there in the fullness but we are determined to keep making those choices. Are we together? Yeah. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till my life looks like him. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till I look just like him. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till I look just like him. I remember many years ago, I would see, I would watch Reinhard Bonke crusades and watch people rise up from wheelchairs, watch people throw crutches. You know, I didn't know the idea of being real or fake then, those things were not in my mind. But I was watching, my God, how can a man have this kind of power? 
He was not, with all due respect to him, he's joined the cloud of witnesses. He was not such an orator. No. He would not share some deep revelation from Greek and Hebrew. No. He would just stand and speak and fire that you can feel in your physical body. I said, what did this man touch? What kind of grace is this? How about um, T.L. Osborne? He was a sound teacher of the word. So he will teach and then you will see mighty miracles. How about Billy Graham? Billy Graham would teach like he's doing a discussion, like a lecture. You will almost feel sorry for him and think nobody will be convicted until he makes the altar call. You see people coming as if they are dragging a chain. Someone coming, you will know that this is the Holy Ghost pushing this man. Because the way the man's face is, you will know that that man should not be in front. And yet he's coming out. But today as preachers, we will shout and shout and shout and even beg people, even kneeling down. Okay, can you come to Jesus? Then we stand up, we raise a song again. We say, I know there's one more person. Come on, don't be ashamed. And, and there are many sinners watching. Even the people by their left and right know from the time service started, they have exhibited characteristics of sinners. The neighbors know the person should be in front and yet the person will not come out. Hallelujah. Because one person chose that as a simple stammerer that he would believe in God and he trusted God for the fire to fall and he made a choice. His choice was simple. God gave me a mandate that Africa shall be saved. And with that, this man went through all the disciplines by choice that produces an evangelist indeed. T.L. Osborne went to India he read his Bible oh, and went to India. And when he went to India, he was praying and asked people, okay, you know, all of this, he finished preaching and the people were just watching him. At the end of it, he prayed, no salvation, no miracles. He left as if they drove him away. He returned back to America and said, God, something must be wrong. This is not what I see in the Bible. And the Lord told him that ministry happens with a demonstration of power. You do not call a people from one side of a belief system to another without a demonstration of power. He said, oh, that's it. He settled down and got genuine spiritual power. He went back to India. When he preached, they were still looking at him like that. And he said one blind person should come out. One person on a wheelchair or I think on a crutch come out. Another person and in their presence, those people got healed. The place erupted erupted and without wasting energy he called people to Jesus that's how it works maybe God is talking to someone if you go and do a crusade like that they will beat you on that ground don't embarrass the name of the Lord stay tarry until ye be endued with power say power, power. if this thing has not landed on your head tarry oh tarry is it's not every region that will just report you to go and read the Bible. Even those that had power, they flog them. Talk more of those that do not have it. I mean, you have your Bible to read. Say power. Many of us downplay the power to choose. I know I'm digressing, but I am telling you, there are certain equippings if you do not carry, don't move to certain terrains. Don't go and call the nation. In Nigeria, nobody will sue you to court if they are not healed. There are regions you gather people, say the sick, the lame, the blind, you have all kinds of problems come. The people are coming, their lawyers are there coming too. And by the time you are done playing games, just when you think you are preparing to return back, you'll find out that you are in the prison. Hallelujah. Choices. Have you chosen to love God? Or are you just loving God? Have you chosen? Let me tell you something about choices. The fact that choices become deliberate, it gives you the staying power to maintain and defend your decisions. The moment you do not make a deliberate decision, listen to me, the energy to remain until you reap the consequences, the outcome of that decision is not in you. That means if I choose today 
that in the name of Jesus Christ, I am going to become a great person, for instance. Do you know the fact that you made that decision, the way God designed it is the energy to stay there even when you are in the pit. And Daniel purposed in his heart, give it to us, Daniel 1 verse 8. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. It doesn't mean he was not hungry. Decisions are powerful. The staying power, the power to endure comes from making conscious decisions. The day you make up your mind that I'm on a journey to get spiritual power, the pain of fasting will no longer affect you. Believe me, every time you feel weary, the, the fact that you have decided, the fact that you have decided, that is why before we fast here, we announce to people that we are going to fast and this is what it's for. Do you know why? Because if you just join carelessly, by 10, you almost feel like you are sick. Because the staying power is not there. Let me tell you why many people cannot push until their destiny emerges. They have not decided. You want to be rich, but you have not decided. I'm not talking of a hustler. You have not decided. You have not seen the need. The day you settle down and say, Lord, this is my Bible. I choose that from this day forward, my children will not beg for bread again. Can I tell you, even if you are saying that in a one room, the entire energy of heaven that needs to support your growth, many people have not chosen to stop what they are doing. Men, the, there are people without prayer, they told themselves, I will not smoke again. I'm telling you, without a preacher, it was a decision they made. And the day they made that decision, either because they told them you have, um, what's this thing that you get when you smoke? Liver, huh? lung cancer. They tell them, Mr. Man, the day you touch one uh, this thing again, that day you are going to die. Out of that fear will come a decision, no prayer, no fasting. They just decided from today, that's the end of it. Can I tell you the truth? By the privilege of God's grace and without any sense of, you, of pride, there are things in my life today, it's not just a free gift, it's a product of a choice. The moment you choose, the power to take your eyes away from many other variables leaves immediately. Are we together? Apostle, I want to pray, but do you know, I pray, there is a grace that comes home, but that grace respects your choice. You don't have the power to change yourself, but you can choose and agree with God that I want to be changed. Hallelujah. I remember very clearly when I made up my mind, I said, Lord, I have searched scripture and I have found out that if I am poor and I don't have the financial wherewithal, I may not do ministry with integrity and I may not be able to help people. Therefore, consciously, I've listened to message, not a money monger, not just some prosperity jargon, consciously, because I want to serve Jesus correctly. I want to live a life of integrity in ministry and to be a blessing. I made that vow today that me and poverty to be forever. The day I made that decision, there was no one naira in my pocket, but it was signed in heaven. Can I tell you? I don't mean to offend you, truly. Many of you are not yet serious enough. The realm of the spirit does not take you serious enough. That's why some things have not changed. Did you hear what I said? Pastor, you are not ready to grow, that's why. You are still giving flimsy excuses. It's because another church is near me. It's because this one is happening. It's because I'm not an indigenous in Abuja. It's a lie. The day you make up your mind and say there is a way out. Father, the same Lord is rich unto all. There are fathers today, with all due respect, they are still giving flimsy excuses. They've not paid us our arrears for five years. That's why I've not risen. It is a lie. The day you get angry and say, Lord, you are the one who made me a father over four children. You cannot give me four children to turn my daughters and my sons into armed robbers and prostitutes. From this day, I made up my mind that my child will never lack school fees again. You will see that the resources of heaven will rush towards you to support it. It is a principle that both spirituality and psychology agree on. That the moment you make a decision, 
How to make that decision come to pass is released to you immediately. The most important thing is to make the decision. Can I tell you, there are many things I've decided in my life and in ministry. At the point that decision was made, the strategy was not even there. But make the decision first. For instance, I will serve the Lord all the days of my life. What will I do now with the covenants of witchcraft? Don't worry. You decide first. In the name of Jesus, I will not take last in class again. Yeah, but I'm like that. I'm not really very sharp in my mind. You are not serious. You are not serious. No, you are not serious. I'm not very bright. No, you are not serious. I know that I'm, I'm a barrister, but I'm not practicing. You know, nobody wants to even, you are not serious. I'm sorry. Don't feel bad, but just believe me. You are not serious. Apostle, people come, they come and receive miracles and they leave me. You are both lying and you are not serious. Nobody leaves what works. Something about what you are saying is not true. You think you are blessing them. They are not getting blessed. Is someone getting angry? Let me speak to the gentleman for one minute. I want you to vow a vow. You know, I, when I talk to you like this, I talk to you in love. There are some things you must choose to never let happen in your life. One, that I will love the Lord with all my heart. I'm, I'm going to run through those things for you. Number two, I will be a responsible person as a leader and as a father. No gentleman in Koinonia should raise irresponsible children. You cannot pay their school fees, transferring the responsibility to your wife and saying, after all, the Bible says two have become one. It means you have been wasting my energy here with all the preaching that I've been preaching. Honestly. Apostle, you are only saying this because somebody will give you a seed after Koinonia. Where were they when we started? Decisions. You can make up your mind from today and say in the name of Jesus, by the next two years, there are certain things that should happen in my life. Do you believe that? You can make up your mind and say, every day from today, I will not sleep if I've not prayed for at least one hour. Decisions. Every day, I must read these one or two chapters. You will default some days, but let the decision be there to guide you. I make up my mind from today, this and that and that friends. You see, the power to choose is an ability that God himself respects. As for me, I've chosen. I used to tell them those days in Zaria that the future of this ministry is in that word, I, across the nations of the earth. And today, by his grace, he has brought great glory to himself and he's still bringing glory to himself. It is not a mistake. I am only grateful to see that some of the choices we made today are now being manifest in our lives. I made up my mind that I will never be a man of God who will go and preach somewhere and waste the time of God's people and as soon as they share the grace, I'll just say this man, no, no, no. So that the choice, whatever needs to be done as a sacrifice to prepare you, is it praying? Is it fasting? Is it building your capacity? Choices is not just a mere wish. It's a decision backed up by the willingness to pay the price. That price factor if you throw it away, you are not choosing. Hallelujah. I remember when I saw a few ministers of the gospel, especially watching their videos, I saw the kind of power that flowed through their life. I made a vow that I will never be a powerless man of God. I researched the subject of power with my passion and with my spirit. Let me tell you with every sense of humility, there are few books about power written by serious people that I've not read. This ministry of power, I followed the thing with grace. And every devil in hell, there are things that when it rests upon you, every devil in hell will know that there are things you have found. Are we together? I made up my mind that nobody will sit under an atmosphere like this that you are listening to me and all I will give you is just a lecture except your faith is not willing to receive. 
no when you sit down it's like you are connecting electricity from front to the back and something from the words your spirit you know you are receiving that impact is beyond an information this is why you you will think you are not understanding but it's entering your spirit i will ask you this question one year later you will still quote it because it entered your spirit it's beyond the lecture this one comes with power hallelujah is someone hearing what i'm saying now yes i found out that the secret to effective ministry in addition to godliness in addition to integrity is to truly carry genuine power that solves the problems of people it doesn't matter how sincere you are if that power comes, you can do acted power stage managed power or assume power you can assume you are powerful When you see me stand and I say things like, oh, there are three people here. I hope you know that those things are not acting. I respect God, but I respect myself too. Are we together now? I will not come and embarrass myself in the presence of people and just, you know the risk it takes, you try it. It's not dull babies that are flying up and down. It's human beings who came to church, respected themselves. My own is to train my discernment that as it's coming from heaven, once it lands, it's like, it's, like, it's like a receptor that is so sharp. As soon as it arrives, I'm ready to declare it. That's why you see what you see. It's not like God just isolated somebody and decided, no, no. Discernment is a quality that can be trained. You can train your spirit to pick signals with such precision. That what God is saying in a moment, that's why it looks like as you are saying it is just happening, is a level of the development of discernment. Hallelujah. Are we together now? I'm saying this because I want to pray over you today. Huh? One of the graces that I'm praying will rest on you is the power to now begin to make quality choices. Quality choices. Remember my teaching at the miracle service that rise up and walk is greater than silver and gold you can have silver and gold but the greater blessing is the ability to rise up and walk to choose that my children will not beg again to choose that my spiritual life will not go up and down again ah, i set before you life and death I set before you blessing and cursing. I set before you a life of pain, a life of misery, or a life of glory. I advise you, choose life. Your choice will affect your seed. I saw certain patterns growing up around my territory. I saw certain, certain patterns around people who had gone ahead of me. And I made up my mind. I said, I will fight a good fight of faith and end certain things now. Let them end in my lifetime, in my presence. If it means me being the living sacrifice, let me be it. But there are certain things that must end. That's why I said, some of you are not yet angry enough. This sermon is supposed to provoke you. If you sit down and keep watching your life like that, what happened to your mother will happen to you. I'm telling you, I'm not a prophet of doom. Gentlemen, if you sit down, you know what spirits have done with preachers in your area. If you just sit down carelessly like that, the same thing will happen to you. You must take a different approach. I will not be the man of God that will finish preaching. There once upon a time I preached and demons attacked me. Not today, not again, not forever. Let me speak to preachers for a moment. Gentlemen, ladies, let me tell you, the end time army must be an army of power. Choose to invest in carrying genuine anointing. Hear me, choose to invest in carrying genuine power. Talking grammar and stories, the world is tired of it. I assure you, mm, power to heal, power to raise men, raise them from a dunghill. Power to declare over nations and shift the spiritual climate of nations. Don't
don't stand before Pharaoh if you don't have power. You are confronting altars that are older than you. You are confronting altars that killed those who went ahead of you. Don't just stand and speak grammar. As for me, I've chosen. You ignore the ministry of power, your life will be such a defeat, I tell you. The missing link for many people is that you have not made the choice to press. You have not made the choice to pray. You have not made the choice to study. Hallelujah. I don't know why I'm speaking to preachers, but let me tell you the truth. The powerlessness of the average man of God with all due respect in this nation, if we do not work on it, we will keep getting angry with ourselves, fighting ourselves out of jealousy and envy that is not necessary. One thing thou lackest, most people lack power. You don't have power and say, I have power. It is nonsense. It speaks. Hallelujah speaks the power that is greater than the cause holding your family you have not chosen to come out of it that's why oh apostle have been suffering from bedwetting who will help me now i can tell you my dear brother my dear sister you are not ready to come out of it that is why there is something about a human spirit when it gets angry there is something about men when they are tired of their current situation yes sir the prodigal son got angry and said, Hey, how many hired servants as my father? And I am here feeding with the swine. Do you believe what you are hearing? Choose life. I have chosen by myself that nothing is going to cut short my life before it's time. It's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. It's only when we get to heaven you will know how many shrines and how many habalis call my name day and night. Let this man die. You are joking. We are here for a very long time. I said before you life and death. You believe what I'm saying? Don't keep quiet. Keeping quiet is a choice to remain a failure. Talando sabarika parusiata. I've seen the spirit of death. I've seen the people that the devil wanted to just take like that. Speak, listen. I learned this from Papa Copeland. Right from when this man was young, he would speak over the organs in his body. And people were laughing at him. Oh, a preacher does not carry fire and this. Many of them have died and gone. This man in his 80s is still standing. Still speaking to the parts of his body. Every part of my body God gave me must hear me. Yes, sir. You must hear me. If you are not obeying me, you are obeying someone else's instruction. I need to know who that person is. Koinonia will not go down. No, there is no going down. No, there is a covenant backed up by the jealousy of Jehovah. There is nothing Satan can do about it. I want you to get angry tonight because I want you to see the areas of darkness in your life. You are allowing the devil destroy people in your life. There are people every year somebody must die. Every year. Can I tell you? You are, you are just mechanically aware you are a priest. It has not entered you by revelation. The day the, re the revelation of your priesthood enters you, ladies and gentlemen, you will stand up with power and shake that altar and said the last person that died in this family will be the last person an end comes to it. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. They comfort me. They comfort me. Choose life. 
Choose life means choose health. Choose life means choose glory. Choose life means choose excellence. Choose life means choose power. The ability to produce results. Choose life means choose speed. Choose life means choose ever increasing glory. Choose life means choose greatness. Choose life means choose Jesus. Hallelujah. Please hear me. Hear me. Please hear me. Hear me. I sense in my spirit in the next, I wanted to run through a list about the various choices. I don't know if I will do that or not, but I just sense the spirit of prayer. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight is the night that God has brought us to be angry at certain things that have been happening in our lives. You are a man of God here. Don't watch things go wrong in your ministry. You can make up your mind. You are a parent here. You are watching your child become maybe an alcoholic or something and you are saying there's nothing I cannot do. You can choose. It is the power God gave man. It is the power God gave man. It is the power God gave man. He respects that power himself. It is the power God gave man. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you this. Please listen to me. Just listen. Listen. When I took out time to study what a, a, an apostolic and a prophetic ministry, the implication of having an apostolic and a prophetic ministry, I remember reading several books on the apostolic ministry. When I saw the spiritual demands, the kind of weight and energy you must carry in the spirit to run a genuine apostolic and prophetic ministry, I knew that I was playing games. I was joking at that level of spirituality. Now, then the relational demands, the kind of influence you must command to be able to do ministry at that level effectively. Then the financial demand is the one that will even scare you. Hallelujah. Because the pioneering anointing is part of the equipping of the apostolic ministry. You will do things that have never been done before. Not in the way they have been done before. And doing new things carry a cost because you are setting the pace. Other people will model it and it will reduce the cost when others follow. But pioneering is expensive. Hallelujah. I went to God in prayer. I said, Lord, I want to do ministry with integrity. This finance thing has tied people down. I don't want this thing to be, I don't want to lose sleep because of money issues. And that's when I took out time. God showed me the power of decisions that you can change your life if you are serious. And I said, Lord, I'm serious. So, and I went to search from scripture. What is the secret of this thing? When I found it, I knew. And today, by the grace of God, we're able to do things for this ministry and across nations. By the grace of God and by the help of God, it has helped to protect integrity while we serve. Let me run through. I will not going to give you time to dictate. Please sit down. I will not give you time to write. I will just run through it, get the teaching because I want us to pray. Seven, one time when I taught you here, I think I gave you five or six, but I want to list for you seven destiny defining decisions that you must make. Then we pray and wrap up. Seven destiny defining decisions. Number one, very quickly. What is the first decision that every man must make? The decision to know the Lord and to serve him all the days of your life. Please write it. This is the first and the greatest decision that every man must make. The decision to know the Lord and to serve him all the days of your life. Matthew 22, 37. The decision to serve the Lord and 
to, to know the Lord and to serve him all the days of your life. That you will love the Lord your God with all your heart. And I'm so honored to have our royal fathers come and declare this, not just for themselves, but for the land. Number two, the second decision is the decision to contend for a superior belief. The decision to contend for a superior belief system. This is very important. Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinketh, give it to us please. As he thinketh in his heart or interchange for mind, so is he. The decision to come out of old belief systems, limiting belief systems, satanic belief systems, mediocre belief systems. Number three. What is the third decision? Destiny defining decision that we must make. The decision to live a life of purpose and meaning. Please write it down. The decision to live a life of purpose and meaning. The decision to live a life of purpose and meaning. Hebrews 10, 7. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. A decision to live a life of purpose and meaning. This is to everyone, but particularly let me challenge the gentleman. It is wasteful to just exist. You give value to your life when you connect it to purpose. Beauty without purpose is useless. Intelligence without purpose is useless. It is purpose that gives value to anything you have. That means whatever God has given you in itself cannot be a blessing until you connect it to purpose. Are we learning? Number four. The decision to contend for health and longevity. The decision not just to be physically fit, contend for health and longevity. Please write it down. It is a project that you must make. I will live strong and I will live long. Say that after me. I will live strong, uh-huh. Prophesy it again. One more time. I will live strong and I will live long. Yes, sir. You don't want to live long being weak. There are people who are in the hospital with all due respect. They will not die and they will not be strong. They become a liability to both themselves and everybody around. The value of longevity is that there is strength. If there is no strength, contending for longevity is a waste. Are we together now? There are young people at 30, 40, 25 they are so, I mean, they are so wrinkled, they almost bend over as if they are grandfathers. You ask them how old you are, are you, and they say 27. And you say, I was going to mistake you for 55. Come on now. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke weakness from your body. Yeah. Agility and strength and power. Without agility and strength, you cannot do the work of the kingdom. You will collapse. Contend for health but contend for longevity. It takes good eating, exercise, training your body and your mind, a correct state of mental health to live healthy. But then it takes speaking the word of God and making prophetic declarations over your destiny to live long. You need both. Contend for health and contend for long life. Are we together? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I choose life in the name of Jesus. No arrow that flies by day. No noisome pestilence that wastes in, in noon, day or wherever will hurt me. No, I am immune by the power of the Holy Spirit. No enchantment and no divination shall prevail over my body. My spirit is comfortable living in this body. My organs are functioning maximally by the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't believe that the moment you get into a certain age, certain sicknesses come with it. Now, I respect doctors. We have lots of doctors here. But you can define your reality by choosing. In the name of Jesus, at 60, my kidney my liver, my health, my thinking, everything is intact by the power of the Holy Spirit. Is someone agreeing on that? 
and you find yourself sick, don't worry. Even while you are in the hospital taking treatment, warn your tomorrow that just because I'm in the hospital does not mean I'm weak. I'm only responsible. It's not weakness, it's responsibility. So while you are going through the surgery, while you are going through the treatment, after everything, don't feel ashamed speaking. And let the devil tell you if you were that powerful, why were you, why did they perform the surgery on you? The devil is a liar. You speak it while you declare strength in the name of Jesus, vitality, energy. The Bible says he keepeth his bones and none is missing. It's the covenant of peace, shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. As a preacher, you declare, I will never collapse on stage because I'm, I'm completely worked out. And no, if you, are, if you are tired, you rest, not die. Are we together? The decision to contend for health and longevity. Number five, the decision to be financially or economically empowered. It is a very major decision. Refer to my teaching last week, I shall not want. Please get the teaching, it's online and listen to it very carefully. It is our heritage in Christ to not be in want. No matter what way or manner it comes, Lack and want does not glorify God, period. Settle that once and for all and get it out of the way. Lack and want does not glorify God. You can glorify God in the midst of lack and want, but lack and want is not God's design for you. Just like a person can survive with only one kidney. Am I right on that? I but that is not God's ultimate. But if that is the case, the doctors can manage the person to have just one kidney. But that is not God's best. John 10.10, 10, I am come, the B part, that ye may have life and that ye may have it more abundantly. Choose life. The decision to be financially empowered. I don't want to go ahead of myself and I don't want to make recaps of last week. I've already spoken extensively on that. But my dear people, please listen to this man who loves you sincerely. Make a decision under God that I will not be poor. Anybody who tries to think you otherwise must be ready to defend you in the midst of your pain and the pain of your children. There are many things we're able to do today. Some of the things, the projects that we want to do for people some of these people will never know Jesus until they have the privilege to go to a good school. It is expensive to preach the gospel. I can tell you, it is expensive to preach Jesus with integrity. You know how much one borehole is? Calculate that times 50. What then is your definition of love if you cannot reach people? What then is ministry? If one borehole is say 1.5, and you do 50 you went to school calculate that that is minus whatever it is that comes that is the price it takes to sell Jesus to a dying world that is the price it takes to let men see Jesus how about widows that are fed how about orphans that would have died I remember I think two years ago or so our medical team went to do an outreach in one of the IDP camps and when they got to that IDP camp, they found a, a, a young child that was almost left for death. Painfully, the child eventually died. I remember some weeks ago, there was a woman who came with a child, was a sickler, joined the queue here. I later found out that the child died. It was so painful. As she held that child, you could see a product of pain, malnourishment. You know that she was a sincere mother, but she was incapacitated. It takes wickedness to sell poverty. Did you hear what I said? It takes wickedness to sell poverty. By God's grace and without sounding arrogant, if it is for your own personal food, you don't need much to eat. But my goodness, you need so much 
there's no need telling you the things that are done on a daily basis for Jesus they require finances integrity requires finances in many regards preaching sincerely and not manipulating people requires economic empowerment in many regards projects that bring the name of Jesus not to brag but sometimes it's good to say some of these things the inmates in the Zaria prison not too long ago we bought them a big generator every quarter or so we send bags of rice stationaries mattresses the same was done i think early this year at the kuje prison these things cost millions and millions of naira i don't want to tell you how much it cost to do the manchester conference that had thousands of people coming to jesus if soul winning is not ministry i don't know what else it is no matter what you claim ministry is if souls are not one you are joking are we together i can tell you that i've told you here what it takes to run this service that you are enjoying right now it is a miracle only god can strengthen men to be able to do that hallelujah there is all not not to insult the givings of god's people but let me tell you sincerely there is only so much tithes and offerings can do believe me believe me you know i'm not lying there are students now going back to school by the privilege of god's grace i've had the honor of taking care of over 600 children and families i've done this for many years i only continue to add with joy it takes a lot of resources to do that let me tell you housing schooling everything my apologies if we sound i just want to give you a superior orientation when you don't know what to do with money you don't need it god will not even give you for your safety but when you know what to do with it you can preach jesus with financial resources and be a blessing to people day and night my phone is full of the cries and the tears of people please do this i just announced to you some of the things by the privilege of god's grace the educational fund just a test run of it alone was 10 million naira and it only keeps growing that is the price it takes to help these children you know his royal highness were having a meeting and he was telling me and i was so humbled some children who today have finished school who if not for that scholarship would never have had the opportunity to go to school what then is our definition of impact hallelujah the bags and bags who are going to be in Zaria this week now. The concert alone. Do you know how much the bill for the medical? I mean, imagine gathering people. I think they are projecting maybe between 600 to 1,200 people. Free medical services. You go and try to get a drug for, for malaria and find out how much it is. And then there are bags and bags of, and we do it for both Christians and Muslims. I love Christians, I love Muslims, I love everybody in between. We are called to preach the message of love. But that is the price it takes. Imagine me coming to meet your child who says on scholarship and I say, sorry, something has happened. This family, from today we cannot pay your rent, know where you are going. You can imagine. There are many people who are converts, who by the grace of God we are taking care of today. That is the price it takes to keep them standing for Jesus. Sometimes we say these things so that we do not, you know, I have a weakness in trying to brag and share testimonies. It's not something that I like doing. But occasionally, if we don't say these things, people just think we're talking about, I mean, what, I mean, how many things? This is all of me. How much money do you need to maintain a person like this? But for Jesus reject poverty oh, in the name of jesus Amen. let it take away shame from your life and don't get beguiled by ignorant people when prosperity has purpose it is a powerful weapon in the hand of people hallelujah contend make a decision under god a hustler's approach i have told you is a defeated person's approach 
all this i want to make money so i'll buy a jeep so i'll enter no 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 that means you don't know god and you don't understand this program how many clothes can you wear in a year how many plates of food can you eat no the bigger cause is to be able to send resources for the sake of jesus i have seen souls saved as i stood i have stood by the grace of god on many crusade grounds and every time i see souls come to jesus i had a very interesting experience in ghana while i was doing an altar call there was this very little boy lovely little boy this boy was kneeling down and he was really you know just sobbing and praying i had to call him up and held him and prayed for him i mean i just my heart just welled up with compassion i was almost tempted to say listen let me put this boy on scholarship till he finishes school i just say well the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace maybe another time what if that child tells you he's an orphan who is just looking for jesus sincerely and then you tell him i bid you good speed go and read the warning james gave us show me your faith by your works if we claim we love jesus we must show it and resources help you to show that you love jesus i have vowed under god and as a covenant to you my dear people i will never may i not live to see that day that i will manipulate you financially simply because we are trying to put something in our pocket no there are some of us who fear god are we together but you see i have told you i am only able to say things like this because number one i love jesus but I will always say it, number two is because there is food on my table. Am I right on that? Yeah. When there is food on my table, it can give me the confidence to remain and teach the truth that I ought to teach. If there is no food on your table, you will listen to me, but you will get up and go and do some things you should not do. There is a woman, probably she's following right now, wonderful woman from one of the northern states. And, you know, I'd never even seen her. There was a tragic situation in, in her life. I don't want to go into details. Compromises that happened be, because of finances for her and her family. But today, this woman, by the grace of God and the privilege of his mercy, has been rehabilitated out of that lifestyle, living a life of dignity. She has a business she's running now, loving the Lord with all her heart. If you don't know what to do with money, sit down and learn from those who know what to do with it. Every time you don't have understanding, sit down and learn from those who know. Are we together? Yes. I'm glad I made that decision. It is a decision I, I will continue to make for myself and for Koinonia. So that we can do so much for His Majesty. For as long as I'm alive, children will go to school. For as long as I'm alive, we will do our best to see that widows and orphans continue to smile. For as long as I'm alive, I will help people financially. I'm not ashamed to say it. Many preachers will be afraid. Because, ah, be careful. I'm not careful. I will say it. For as long as I am alive, I will not do everything, but I will do my best. Hallelujah. I will do my best. The ones we can help, we will help. The ones we can cry with, we will cry with. The ones we can pray with, we'll pray with. The one who we can stop from living a dirty life to be able to follow a life of meaning and know Jesus, we will do our best. Where we are limited, we'll ask the Lord to show us mercy and raise others who have our kind of orientation. But to chicken out just because of the fear of prosperity message is nonsense. Not Joshua Selman. It's a covenant I have made. I know how money can demonstrate love and we intend to use that weapon and show nations the love of Jesus. If you're in agreement, say amen. amen. Try becoming rich with understanding and see how better your life becomes. Are we together? You will serve the Lord. You will end many quarrels in your family that have no root. You will end many things. You will live in peace. Do you know that remaining healthy takes finances because it demands eating well? That they tell you, don't eat this, don't eat that. Is it not somebody who has money that can obey that medical advice? Take supplements, do this. Don't eat rice, don't eat cabbage. What else will you eat? <laughs> A simple surgery 
that was going to be performed on one of our ladies, I think, that, that entire procedure, because that lady's life was at stake, it will require about 600,000 for that to happen. Probably that lady would have been dead by now. But thank God for the ministry of resources with understanding. That lady is alive and healthy. And her family can see her preach Jesus today. Let me give you the last one. Koinonia is quiet. I presume you are thinking. Number six. I promise seven. The decision to build strategic destiny relationships. I won't say much there. I've said so much about relationships. The decision to build strategic destiny relationships. You must have one friend in your life. If you don't have it, when we are praying, pray. Because something is wrong. If you have many friends, you are in trouble. It's not a sign that you are popular. It's a sign that you are careless. Did you hear that? Because your values should naturally edit many people out of your life. If you think you are a celebrity and you have everybody just likes me, it's a sign you are a city without walls. You must have people of values and people of standards. But you need friends. You need friends. Many of us don't have friends. Hallelujah. Many of us don't have friends. I think I was giving a charge at the wedding of our people yesterday and one of the things I told them is that marriage was not designed to solve all your emotional problems. That is a big mistake. There are many people punishing marriage today because they expect to get all their emotional comfort from marriage. That is not the design. There are dimensions of relational and emotional comfort that only comes from your relationship with Jesus. There are dimensions of emotional and relational comforts that only come when you have godly strategic relationships. There are dimensions of emotional and relational comfort that comes when you have a spouse. There are those that come when you have children. They were all allocated their space. Hallelujah. If there is a relational void in you, check whether you have a relationship with Jesus. Then next to that, check if you have quality people in your life. I'm praying for you. May you never lack an ear to hear when you are in trouble. Especially if you are a man of God. Loneliness has killed many people because they do not have anybody they can confide in. They are afraid of everybody around them because they do not even know who to trust again. This is one of the problem of great people. They have gone through enough wounds and betrayal. They just believe that everybody is out to destroy them. But it is not true. There are still honest people. There are still godly people. There are still good people. There are still friends that stick closer than brothers. May you be one. And then may you find one. Final decision number seven. Destiny defining decisions. Number seven. The decision to be a blessing. Genesis 12, 3. The decision to be a blessing. You will think that this is the same as finding purpose. They are similar, but this is different. You can fulfill your assignment and truly not be a blessing. You can excel in career and yet not be a blessing. Do you know what it means to be a blessing? When nations arise and thank God for your life. When nations arise and say, thank God you are alive. When nations arise and say, imagine what would have been if you were not there. That is what it means to be a blessing. To be a blessing does not mean to be popular. You can be popular and not impactful. I learned that from Dr. Miles Monroe. There are many people who are pursuing fame and popularity. Popularity does not mean influence. Popularity does not mean impact. You can be very popular, known across the globe, but not impactful. Anna the prophetess was not popular, but she was impactful. Jesus was both popular and impactful. I choose impact a thousand times to fame and popularity. The burden of being famous is something that if you know, you will not be in a hurry to receive it. Hallelujah. The dynamics, the pressure 
that comes with this in quote celebrity lifestyle that people die to have choose impact that somebody is smiling today because you are alive someone is eating today because you are alive someone is going to school because you are alive hallelujah someone will be saved this night now because there is coin on here a family will be happy somebody will act upon what you are hearing now only God knows how far what I'm saying will get to and whose life is being changed now. Do you know what it means to get up in the morning knowing that you are going to be a blessing? You get up in the morning knowing that one sick body will be healed because you are awake. You get up in the morning knowing that one confused person will find direction of the many things that happen when people send me text messages. I tell you, sometimes people say thank you and all of that. But when I see testimonies of transformation, Apostle, I was like this before. I listened to one of your message. Look at what has happened to me now. Sometimes in my silence, tears just begin to come to my eyes. And I say, Father, thank you for keeping me alive. It is because of your mercy and your grace that someone's life is being changed today. Living a wasted life that does not bless people living a wasted life that is centered on self myself make money ends meet my reputation at the end of your life you will find out that you did not do well with such a life two teachings that will help you one what seekest thou in fact three now lessons from an overcomer you would want to get that teaching to listen to it again and again the final one being the law of seasons listen to these teachings very well and they will open your eyes. I have studied the science of achievement. I have studied the art of fulfillment. The only gift you can give yourself is not money. It is fulfillment. The satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively, serving the purposes of the kingdom and being a blessing to humanity. If Christ tarries, no matter how long we live, someday this man you see will have to join the cloud of witnesses too. You see that now when all is said and done the truth about it is that no matter how much you have in your bank account no matter how many certificates you gather no matter how many sermons you have preached all those things will count less the most important thing will be the lives you have changed today tl osborne has joined the cloud of witnesses reinhard bonke joined the cloud of witnesses hallelujah aura roberts joined the cloud of witnesses pat robinson joined the cloud of witnesses all of these men but today we are proof that they succeeded we have become extensions of their legacy promoting preserving this gospel that they lived and died for this is what life is all about life is beyond eating and drinking as important as i'm i drum the issue of finances life is beyond making money life is beyond going to school life is beyond having a wife and a husband life is beyond having children life is beyond building a house the greatest way to live your life is to spend it glorifying jesus and then being a blessing to someone i want to ask you a question as we wrap up who can thank god because you are alive today who can thank god because you are awake today let's start with your immediate family can they say lord thank you for giving us such a brother thank you for giving us such a sister thank you lord for the kind of father i have thank you lord for the kind of mother i have i look at our royal fathers today and i can tell you as a man of god i thank god for selecting these kinds of people to be our royal fathers only god knows if if it was otherwise a combination a set of people that can hand over a territory to jesus is the kind of royal fathers i want hallelujah imagine if koinonia did not come to abuja let's keep all the miracles and everything let's just focus on souls as a case study you know the tens of thousands of souls that have been saved i travel around and i'm telling you sometimes when i'm tired and drained when i remember that living my life the greatest way to bless people is to introduce them to jesus when i see people come to jesus young and old it does something to my spirit that is beyond being a preacher that is truly what it means to be blessed you give people food if they die in sin they go to hell you heal people they die in sin they go to hell 
You give people a house, they die in sin, they go to hell. You send them abroad, they die, they go to hell. But one who has Jesus has everything. Can I tell you this? You are here tonight, not just to hear a man speak, but you are here because a blessing is being made out of you. And the Bible says, destroy it not, for there is a blessing in it. You become indestructible because you have chosen to be a blessing. I live a very happy and fulfilled life for the singular reason, if not any other reason. The fact that souls continue to be saved through my life is enough motivation to remain alive. If I'm not able to preach any sermon, if I'm not able to sing any song, if I'm not able to travel and speak to kings and nobles, if I'm not able to inspire a generation, if the only thing I can say is John 3.16 and it keeps building, bringing people to Jesus, that will be my one and only sermon till the day I see his face. Examine your life whilst you are listening to me. Living for yourself is a loser's way of living. You must spend yourself and be spent for a cause that is nobler than yourself. To pour your heart for Jesus and to love him sincerely. The day that I will see his face, I'm sure and I hope that you will say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. And I hope I will see you too. Let me tell you, he would not just say well done to me alone. He would turn and say, ushers, where are you? Well done. He will turn and say, protocol, where are you? Well done. He will turn and say, medical people, where are you? Well done. He will turn and see the person who sent 10,000 naira quietly and say, well done. He will turn and see someone who sent a text and say, apostle, God bless you. And say, thank you for motivating my son. He will turn and see a mother who was an intercessor somewhere. He will say, thank you. He will turn to my royal fathers and say, thank you for insisting that the land serves Jesus. He will turn to all of you, my dear people, Koinonia Global, and say thank you because when you heard the word, you came and became a formidable army that has brought this many souls to Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your coming to church is beyond honoring the call of a man. No. It's beyond being a fan. There are no fans in this ministry. Fans have no reward. You are connected with understanding and by covenant. And I've told you, for every preaching, every singing, every instruction in righteousness, every nation that I travel to, you have gone with me in the spirit. Through your prayers, through your giving, through your love, by calling other people to be part of it. I want you to know that one day when we stand before his majesty, the king of all kings, as I hear thank you, you will also hear thank you. Are you ready to pray now? I choose life. Go ahead and pray. I choose life. I choose life. I choose life. I choose spirituality. I choose transformation. Someone is praying. I choose purpose and meaning. I choose health and longevity. I choose economic empowerment to live a life of dignity and to serve the kingdom with honor. I choose quality destiny relationships. Finally, like Abraham and like the seed of Abraham indeed, I choose to be a blessing. Let my life count. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Declare, I choose life. Ask the Lord to help you. Every decision that you have made that has brought you pain, every decision you are now making that is leading you to perdition, leading you to destruction, leading you to decline, leading you to failure, leading you to anger, leading you to jealousy. Ask the Lord to show you mercy and to grant grace that from today you begin to make quality superior decisions by the word. 
by the word the primary instrument that guides our making decisions is the word of God then the ministry of the Holy Spirit then the counsel of those who have gone ahead go ahead and pray before I speak over your life For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. He said, as for me and my house. Choose life means choose spirituality. Choose loving and serving Jesus passionately. Beyond church traditions. Choose life means choose to upgrade your thinking to a superior mentality that attracts possibilities that are what compliance to your life. Choose life means choose to live a life of purpose and meaning, not just rigmaroling around the corridors of life and destiny. Choose life means choose vitality, whatever it takes to walk in health, vitality and soundness. Choose life means to choose financial and economic empowerment that the Lord is truly your shepherd and there are keys he has given you and that when you understand and engage those keys it is true that you shall not want choose life means choose strategic relationships you cannot be a believer in the midst of unbelievers and say it does not care you cannot be a child of God in the midst of people who mock God and say it does not care show me your company he that walks with the wise the bible says shall be wise himself but a companion of fools shall be destroyed and finally choose life means i choose to be a blessing that one day the nations will call your name and say thank god you came that you will not just be a number that passed the face of the earth but one day they will thank you and say thank god for such a daughter you cannot imagine how honored I was. Again, to make reference to our royal fathers, when they said some of the things that they said, it is truly an honor to be alive and to serve, and to serve in a way that your people and the nations can see that you are making efforts and you are doing well to serve Jesus. We may not have done everything. There is always room for more. But my goodness, I am so glad to serve Jesus. I am so glad to live for him. I am so glad to spend my days heralding his name to the nations to be a blessing. Someday one child will come to Koinonia and hug you and you'll say, who are you? And you say, I'm the child you prayed for. I'm the child you paid school fees for. Who are you? I am the child who your sermon stopped me from serving idols. Someday someone from my region will come and hug me and I will say, who are you? And he said, you may not know me, but I watched that day when your land was being handed over to Jesus. Amazing, isn't it? Make up your mind that I will not live an ordinary life again. The key is not to do ministry. The key is to serve Jesus. You can do ministry and be out of the will of God and be wasting your time just trying to build an empire. Serving Jesus is a better proposal with all your life, with all your heart. As I speak over your life, I want to make one strong call right now. Choose life means choose Jesus. Choose his life. Choose his ways. Choose life means give up your ways and follow the ways of Jesus. Perhaps you began to hear me whilst I was preaching. And while I was preaching, the Spirit of God began to speak to you. And he was telling you, listen to this, my son. Listen to what he's saying, because in choosing me, you have chosen life indeed. The greatest way to choose life is not to make money. The greatest way to choose life is not to be educated, as important as that is. The greatest way to choose life is not even just to serve in church. It is to have that functional relationship with Jesus. I want to make an altar call now. Whether you are outside, all the overflows, inside, following across the globe, here is an opportunity to know Jesus in truth. I'm going to count one to five, and I'm calling by this count two groups of people. 
Number one, those who will say, Apostle, give me the honor of making this decision in the presence of God's people once and for all. For someone you are saying, hearing you speak, I have made bad decisions. I want to rededicate my life sincerely. As I count one to five, without shame, without fear, I want you to leave your seat and run. Come and stand here now. One. Koinonia, let's celebrate them. Don't sit back when the Spirit of God is telling you you need to come. Come. Koinonia, keep clapping. It is your sacrifice. You are encouraging them as they come. Come. There is always room for you at the cross. Dear brothers and sisters, come. No matter how you have derailed, come to Jesus. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Come. Yon hair, why hair is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Join them, you have just a few seconds. Just breathe your name upon me, Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Your name, your name is your name. Come, Lord. come. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I want to salute you, my dear brothers and sisters, for making this noble decision. The wisest decision any man can make in this side of God's kingdom is the decision to make it right with Jesus. That is true security when we get it right with him. You can fail in every other area, but if you get it right with Jesus, you are a victor indeed. You are a winner indeed. I'm going to be praying for you now. That includes those who are watching by television, those who are watching online. Here's your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. May I request that you please lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender say this after me say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever. I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your beautiful hands lifted and I speak over you. Father, thank you for these precious ones. You have brought them to your presence to change them. Now they are changed. I pray that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave be broken over your life. And in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that every force that has held you down, let it give way right now. I just saw light coming on two of you. There are two of you. I just saw like light resting on you. I curse that spirit right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release you from anything and everything that has held you down. The power to live a victorious Christian life. I release upon you right now in the name of Jesus you go forward ever and backward never in Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen and amen let's give them a big God bless you please